So you might be wondering what pizza and sandwiches have to do with graphic design or learning Photoshop and Illustrator. Well, during my time as a professor for over two decades working with people from novices to uh, including those who've never touched a Macintosh to those who maybe have taught themselves um, Photoshop but maybe uh, are reluctant to use Illustrator or those who have had additional experience with other teachers uh, come to me and still lack this certain skill in understanding how the programs work in comparison to each other and how layers work. So I come up with metaphors a lot when I'm teaching and coaching and I find that food is often something that we can imagine in our heads. Uh, so let's get started with Photoshop. All right, here we are in Photoshop with a brand new file, brand new open file. And the only layer in the layers palette is the original file background. So it's important to remember that Photoshop terminology comes mostly from the history of photography and using uh, the darkroom. So layers are a key important element to uh, original photography because partially it has to do with uh, compositing images together. So there's a big history with photo montage of how to utilize multiple uh, film images from a camera uh, mushed together, basically. Okay, so we're going to understand how to combine two images together here. So we have two different images relating to pizzas. All right, so I'm going to go to this one first, and I'm going to select all. It's important to uh, know how to use your key commands. So up here under select all, it's command A. So you can also do that without the drop down menu. I'm going to copy. And notice that this is a background image and it's currently locked. And I'm going to paste it, which is Command V, into this other layer, uh, or excuse me, I'm going to paste it into my original image of making pizza. And you can see that this turns into a layer one. Right. So usually I recommend that you copy the background layer, but before we do that, I'm going to show you. You cannot go underneath a background layer. So in essence, a background layer is kind of like your pizza dough, and you can't put anything underneath it when you're making your pizza. So when you're moving these items around, you're going to use the crossbar uh, move tool. And for now, another lesson is about changing your canvas size and checking your image size. But we're just going to put this at the bottom of the image. Now, why do we want to worry about the background layer? Well, maybe I want to put something underneath this or how I'm going to show you how the layer effects work. Okay, So the layer effect happens with the objects that are on top and below. The other element of wanting to make sure that you copy the background image is in case you, um, for example, maybe you erase something. Let me just make this bigger so we can see. You know, maybe I erase something and I go and do other items in the program, I actually cannot come back and fix that. This is a pixel-based program, so once I erase something, the content is actually deleted. So I can save myself a little bit of a step by going over here to duplicate layer. I do this every single time I open up a new file that I'm working with because I want to retain the original item and not mess it up. So I can hide that. These are hide and show uh, in the layer palette. Now, it doesn't make any sense right now because I still am showing the background copy. So let me just show you both of those. Okay, now you can see that I can move these two and I can decide which one is on top and which one is underneath. Okay, now if I keep this one on top and I use lighten, let's go here and click on this one and try lighten. 
And you can see that it tends to have the same layer effect. Uh, there's a bunch of other ones in here, but I tend to just kind of go through and see uh, which one is most effective. Okay. And it relates to what's on top, what's underneath. We're going to stick with Lighten. The other thing that you want to remember is that the, the layers have to be selected in order to move and to transform the sizes of them. You can hit Command T, which is Transform. And then I can also uh, add typography to this, although I don't recommend typography uh, more than just a headline or a word in Photoshop because it is a pixel-based program and it turns your typography into pixels, which means that you cannot edit your typography once the image is completed. So if there's a typog typographic error or uh, you have a headline that maybe at the end of the, the um, working on the document, the client says, I need you to change that word. It takes more time to go back in and edit all of the Photoshop. Okay, so the other thing that I want you to realize is that um, if I drag an image in from the internet or I drag it from my desktop, I might not have these terms here. Now, some people would just prefer to, instead of making a copy, to actually unlock the layer. So I wanted to show you that that turns into layer zero. It still doesn't change uh, the fact that if you delete something on that layer, it disappears. But what ends up happening is it's changing that from the pizza dough layer. Okay, But oftentimes people forget to do that. Uh, and this is how you have to delete things and Photoshop can only go back a certain number of steps when you're going to undo something. So that's why I like to keep the background image original just in just for safekeeping because maybe I want to change um, something and go back to the original. All right, let's look at Illustrator and compare the two things. Okay, so here we have an illustrator, uh, some sandwiches. And what I want to show you is how to organize your layers. And we'll go back to Photoshop in a minute to talk about that. But you can see here that these are organized as far as uh, text, art, and the background. So background, right now, this is drawn as a, a box. Now, if this was actually gonna be printed, you want to bleed what's called bleed off of the edge of the paper. Uh, so bleed. All right, bleed is a printing te term that is used to describe the edge of the paper and how much of the visual information you need to go off the edge of the printed piece so that when the um, when it's actually being created, let me just make this like gray or something, the, onto a printed surface, there's enough space on the edges for a machine to chop that off. Uh, so you want to extend your box all the way off the edge of the page if this is gonna be something that's printed. If it's not gonna be printed, the edge of the page actually will disappear uh, when you save this as an artboard um, for um, screen. Okay, so let's look at the layers here again. We have text, we have art, and the items within 
those things. Now I can use the hide and show pal uh, buttons here to get rid of certain things. And you'll notice that unlike the Photoshop with the background that was a pizza dough that I can't go underneath, as a sandwich I could change the order of my objects. So here I can move these back and forth. Okay. So I want you to remember that these objects have not um, erased or deleted. They're just laying on top of each other. And they're laying on top of each other in order of placement. So let's look at a new document to try this concept out. So we're gonna go to new. And I'm just gonna choose the standard for now. Okay. So here's our uh, shape tools. So let's just pretend we're going to start with a rectangular shape that is uh, reminiscent of a piece of bread. And then maybe we'll do, you know, a layer of cheese. And I'm not putting these directly on top of each other so you can see the order in which they're working. And then maybe there's some sort of meat, you know. Okay. All right. So you'll notice that they are covering each other up in the order in which I place them. So I have the bread layer, the cheese layer, the meat layer, and I cannot uh, move those around and put them on top of each other unless I do the following. So one of the ways I can do that is I need to remember that this is objects. So under the, the menu bar up here, object, and I want to move it. I want to bring that to the front. Okay, so I can change the order of the placement by my arrangement. Now this works really as an interesting element if I'm going to use the Pathfinder tool here, so say I want to combine these images, the, the black and the orange here, okay? Um, and in the Pathfinder tool, when you roll over the different icons, it tells you basically what it's gonna do. So this one is gonna combine the shapes, okay? I'm gonna undo that. This one is going to cut out the shape that is in the front. So that's where you need to think about the um, which layer of objects, not layers physically, but which order the objects have been placed. So if this is in front of that, then it's going to minus that. If I change that around, it's going to cut the circle out of that rectangular shape. So here I'm going to get the intersection between them, and then this I'm going to punch a hole into this. So it's important to remember that the object that is on the top when you're doing these pathfinders, the finished uh, new object will take the properties of the item that is on the top. So everything turned black with a white border. And I can flip those around if I want to here. So another way that you can arrange your items is if you put them onto layers. I'm going to move this out of the way. We're going to come back to that. So I can create new layers in the palette here, and then the drop-down menu also allows me to either duplicate or make a new layer. And then I also, over here, have my file, edit, right, object, and then these are all the different um, menu elements. So there's typically two or three ways to get to our final uh, goals once we understand what we're trying to do. All right, now if I have all of these here, you notice that they all have a blue borderline that is highlighted when they're selected. And over here on my layers, you can see that one is green, one is red, one is blue. These are all blue, and they're all on the blue layer. But I want to change that. 
So I'm going to just click this little square button over here and I'm going to drag that to the next layer. So my yellow cheese has now been placed onto the red layer and my orange meat I'm going to move to my green layer. If I double click on these, I can change the layer name. For now, I'm just going to keep them layer one, two, three, so that you can see how they're rearranged. And then I can also, I can also double click when I'm not in the name, but I'm on that level of the layer and I can change the color of the layer. So if you're working with a, a lot of colors that are contrasting or, or too similar to the outline color that you want to work with, um, then you can change the color of the layer so you can see it better. You can also change the name of the layer in that when you double click on it. Okay, so notice how that changes the frame that is just highlighted when the object is selected. Now here I can change and move, you know, things around and underneath. So you don't have to do this every single time that you are creating um, lots of objects, shapes. That would get really crazy and confusing. Uh, the computer will, the program will uh, automatically sometimes you can change it and it'll put that group and the layers within your layer so you can go into that sub when you click on here it gives you the little rectangle right so um, if I'm on this layer let me just make a second shape okay so I'm on the green so you can see that when I click on that here's my other two objects but again this big orange was made before the second orange. So if I change the color of this, you'll see what I mean. Okay, so the color will tell you that this is the first object or the earlier object that was created and then this is the newer. So it's really about making your sandwich in the order that you're making it in. So let's go back to the Illustrator sandwich demonstration. And we're going to zoom in on this. So if you can see what I'm talking about here, where the bread is actually several shapes grouped together. The spinach is several shapes grouped together. And it still exists, even though uh, there's objects on top of them. So if I want to change my layers so that I can move these around, if I go into my art file, you can see all of the, let's move this, open this up a little bit. You can see here's my tomatoes, here's the cheese, here's the meat, here's the egg that's lower down. So I'm going to make a couple of new layers and I'm going to get them outside of the art just so that it's easier for us to see. So all I need to do is to click on this little blue dot square and move it to the other layer. So I'm going to take my cheese and I'm going to move that to a new layer and then I'm going to take the meat and I'm going to move that to a new layer. So now that those are on separate layers you can really see how I can move them on the top and the bottom to arrange them in a different order. Okay, And I want my tomatoes on the bottom so I'll move those underneath and maybe this is like a hollandaise or something maybe I'm gonna put sauce on this sandwich um, and I want to be able to make it more of a salad so I'm gonna put my uh, spinach underneath so let's make a new layer for the spinach and you can see that it's right here. And then I can go underneath. Okay. So that's basically the general concept of how uh, layers are going to work for you. I'm going to go back one more time to the other uh, file just to finally explain how the Pathfinder tool works. Okay, so you can see that these two objects the circles 
or the circle and the ellipse. Let's go to the Pathfinder tool. Okay, since those are on the same layer right now, if I want to cut a hole in the center, want to punch a hole in this, I click on that button and you can see again that the properties take on what's in front. So this turned into a blue shape. Now I obviously can go back and change the colors, but that just helps you understand the differences between them. Now, these two objects are on different layers, remember? Okay, so we've got blue layer and the green layer. And I'm gonna select by dragging both of these items together, and I'm going to experiment with this Pathfinder tool. Okay, so if I combine the shapes, notice that the black layer is in front. Okay, so it moves everything and keeps it on the front and turns it into the black design. This one takes the properties of what is underneath, but you can tell by the blue that it moves the orange up to that layer. Same thing here, it's gonna cut out in the intersection and I'm on the, um, it takes the properties of what's in front. And then this one is punching the hole. So let's see what happens here. It takes on the properties of what's on top and it moves it to that layer. So if you want the orange to be on top, then you'll notice that this changes to orange, okay? Now, just to finish this out, let's go back over to Photoshop and look at the layers one more time in how we're using layer effect. And the Pathfinder tool is something that you use in Illustrator. So that's another lesson about the difference between Photoshop and Illustrator as far as pixels and vectors go. So see the uh, skate video that I'm gonna... So there's a difference between Photoshop as a pixel-based program and Illustrator as a vector-based program, which I talk about in my skate metaphor. Uh, so check that out. Okay, so over here, once we save this file, we can do File, Save As, and I'm going to save it as a JPEG, and I'm going to explain how this works as the pizza metaphor. Okay, so a JPEG is for a compression purposes. It means that I'm not gonna be able to edit it. It's going to um, make the image quality high, medium, or low, keep it around that medium high range. But what I wanna show you what happens is in the layers here. Notice how it went to layer one. So we're gonna save this as a JPEG and I'm gonna change the name of it so we see the difference between the two. So here's a JPEG. Okay. Now this is a compression file and what it's going to do is basically it's gonna bake that pizza so everything melts together. And what you can see happens when I click OK, it asking me for these options. So it's going to blend and melt everything together like you put it, the pizza in an oven. And that means that the file is no longer an editable file as far as the layers go. So you can't go back into a JPEG file and fix your layers. You have to save it um, as a new name so that you can keep your pizza pie as a Photoshop file. Okay, so you can see the two differences between I've got my working layers and then, so I have my working layers over here and then my slightly different named JPEG file has been melted and cooked together so it's not an editable object. Um, back over in my editable Photoshop file 
I can move my layers around, I can hide my layers, I can um, add something new, I can delete things, I can replace things, I can select, um, I can go to my background and I can say I want to select all of the objects that are around um, the people and just for sake of uh, quickness, if I hit delete, I'm on the background layer, if I hit delete, it is going to give us, this is some extra secret content. So if I hit delete on the background layer, the content aware button is going to be the, the default. So I'm just gonna show you what this does because it kind of creates these happy accidents. Um, and it's going to go, the computer's going to go and look around the space and try to figure out what that is supposed to look like. So it's actually a really fun, happy accident, uh, content aware delete. Um, but it only works on the background layer. I'm going to show you it once here, and then we're going to try it on a different layer. Can you see the difference? Let's try it again. Let's just, maybe we don't want all of this. All right, so I'm just gonna select this area, even though it's gonna pick up other random things, so you can see what happens when I do this um, delete. All right, so I'm on the background layer, and for kicks, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit delete and I'm gonna explain what the default here is on the background layer, it says content aware. This is actually a really fun um, item for happy accidents in Photoshop, so I'm gonna click OK. All right, so what you can see here is a really fun happy accident. It works better sometimes when there's lots more patterns, but the content aware is basically saying, I'm gonna delete the background and there's nothing else there so I'm going to try and make this um, random pattern with whatever is around so if I hit undo you can kind of see um, how that changes if you're looking to experiment with Photoshop that's one good way to do it now I'm going to show you the same thing on the background and when I hit delete it basically just deletes Okay, so that's one advantage of having the background uh, layer rather than the background copy when you're trying to do some um, of the delete and the experimenting with, uh, with the tool. So that's really fun. You can use the background layer to create innovative, unexpected, happy accidents as part of your visual information, or you can you know, use the tool as a functioning, um, deleting some of the pixels. But because I have this background uh, layer still in existence in the Photoshop file hiding in the background, literally, as my pizza dough layer, I can go back to that if I make a mistake and I actually hit delete on my other image um, and can't get it back. It's, it's automatically there. Okay. Thanks for watching. I hope that this uh, tips and uh, the metaphor of pizza and sandwiches is going to help you when you are working in either Photoshop or Illustrator and understanding the differences and how the layering of the objects that you're creating in Illustrator affects how they are viewed and interact with each other in comparison to the layers in Photoshop and how those are interacting with each other. And you can't go underneath the pizza dough layer background, uh, whereas in Illustrator you can reorganize your layers to your choice, whether you want the lettuce layer or the cheese layer on the bottom, that's, that's up to you.